Patrick Smith with Cure for Ignorance and Gun Safe Academy in Oman, Nebraska. Talking very briefly today about uh, lights, lasers, reflex sights, and biometric safes. Basically your firearms accessories that rely on batteries in order to operate. Uh, start with biometric safes. Uh, these things are 150, 200 bucks, 300 bucks that take either a biometric fingerprint from you or a, or a four digit combination. It's supposed to allow you to access the firearm very quickly. Um, a lot of these things are going to have a key backup system too, so if the battery goes dead, you unlock it with the key. Um, I don't like relying on something that takes a battery uh, for my life. I don't like relying on battery life for my life. Um, you got an Android phone, uh, heck, this thing. If I relied on this for my life, I'd be dead about once a day. It seems like I can go through a battery a day without even really trying, uh, whether it's watching YouTube videos or even just using it for, for regular email and, and talking like that. Um, so I don't like biometric safes. Uh, again, you can spend two, three hundred bucks for a safe that holds one firearm, one pistol. Uh, you can buy a hundred dollar stack on say that's going to hold eight long guns and a couple of pistols. So that doesn't seem very cost effective to me. Uh, talking about uh, lasers and lights on pistols or on rifles. You can see that this gun, there's nothing in the magazine well, there's nothing in the uh, in the chamber there. It has been visually and physically inspected. And for this demonstration, I'm going to have to point the gun at the camera in order to give you an idea what the laser looks like. Um, this light on this gun is a, a little cheap uh, Walther light. Okay, It's about 40 45 bucks. It's got uh, six LEDs on the front of it there and a laser on the front. Uh, give you an idea of what the laser looks like on the firearm. It's got a little, a little switch on the end cap. It's actually right there. You can hit it with your index finger as you're laying across the trigger well. Okay, so uh, here's the laser. Okay, here's the light. You can just turn both on at once, the laser and the light together. Okay, um, start with light. Uh, light can be a very good tool, uh, a very good thing. Uh, you actually use light as a weapon. Okay, and pretty much any one of these flashlights, as long as the diameter of the flashlight is about an inch, uh, you can pretty much mount any flashlight you want to on a gun by simply using a one inch scope mount, something like this, okay? Uh, flashlight mounts inside that, uh, you tighten it down, attach it to the Picatinny rail on your firearm, and uh, there you go. Uh, so, <clears throat> I also like buying uh, flashlights and things that instead of using a, a single lithium battery, a three volt lithium battery, I uh, have a little battery here like this, so you can use uh, several triple A's instead. Um, lights that take a, um, LED uh, bulbs instead of uh, the halogen bulbs are actually going to do a lot better for battery life on you too. Um, but light can be a powerful weapon, um, especially in the dark. Uh, it can be disorienting. They won't be able to see you past the light in the dark. Uh, you see even uh, the, the cameras having a hard time adjusting uh, to regular light versus the light of the flashlight. Um, it also allows you to vary the light mode too. Um, it's got a strobe on there. Strobe can be very good, very disorienting for an attacker in your house. <clears throat> so there's some benefits to having lights. Um, and if you have a light mounted on your gun, then it's bringing up this hand in order to open doors and go through the house like that. Um, we can talk about Nebraska law uh, real briefly here, uh, in that Nebraska there's a duty to retreat. Uh, meaning that even if someone breaks into your own house, if you can leave safely, you must do that. And the reason, the rationale behind that, is that if you can leave safely and you don't, then you're not shooting the, the intruder in order to protect your life because you could have left safely. You're shooting them then to protect your property, and in Nebraska you cannot use deadly force to protect property. So at the only time it uh, would be legally allowable to go through your house and clear it in the dark uh, is if you're gathering up family members in order to bring them back to the safe room or you're trying to evacuate your family from the building. And in that instance, if you meet the attacker uh, while going forward, uh, just to gather those family members back, you can use deadly force in that instance. Uh, but if everyone is safely behind you and you go searching the house, that's not defense, that's offense. And if you shoot someone for that, you're, you're going to go to prison for that in Nebraska. Um, so, in clearing the house is very dangerous to you. The defendant position is always stronger. Clearing the house is very dangerous, even if you're a trained professional. Um, but light can be a good weapon. I tell people a lot of times too, if you got someone creeping around your house and you're going out to get the kids and stuff, uh, yeah, the light on the on the gun might help, but it also might illuminate, they might not be able to see you behind the light, but they're going to know that the flashlight going through the house isn't him, 
because they're hiding behind your couch. They're going to notice you, wait to eat to the bottom of the stairs, and then kill you. Um, so if you're going to clear your house because you're gathering family members and it's dark, uh, turn the lights of the house on. As you're going through, flip hallway lights on. It allows you to see what's happening, um, and it's a good idea. Okay. Um, so light can be a powerful weapon, even if they're even if it's not on the gun. They're used to a dark house, and now the entire room is illuminated. It's going to take them a while for their rods and cones to adjust to that light level, and that's going to give you an element of surprise there. Um, talking about lasers, uh, lasers. I don't really like lasers uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, they take batteries. Again, I don't like relying on battery light to protect my life. Uh, if you're the SWAT guy and you always start the fight, then there might be some benefit to lasers for you. It might uh, might allow you to to acquire your target faster during a, during an encounter like that. But if you don't have time to check your batteries before the fight, how do you know they're going to work before the fight? If I load this uh, flashlight up with three AAAs or a lithium battery and I leave it on my nightstand and it stays there for five years and now the guy, bad guy is breaking in, I turn the switch on and nothing happens because my battery's dead, uh, I don't want to I don't want to have that, that moment of panic there. Uh, one reason I really don't like uh, lasers is because they teach you bad habits. Uh, if you have a laser on a pistol and you're shooting at the target, uh, or a rifle for that matter, uh, what are you looking at? You're looking at the, the red dot or the green dot. You're looking at the laser. You're looking at the target. Lasers teach you bad habits and they teach you to look at the target. Um, when you're shooting, you should be focused on your front sight. Target and the rear sight should both look fuzzy to you. The front sight should be nice and sharp and clear. So if now you're going for your gun and you're used to that red dot, you're looking for the red dot, you can't find the red dot, okay? Now you have to try to remember how to use your sights, and in so doing, you've wasted time and are perhaps dead, okay? Um, people that like lasers say, well, it helps you acquire your target even in extremely low light conditions. Uh, so you can see where the red dot is on the silhouette, and you don't need to see your sights then. You don't have to profile your sights against the target in order to hit it. Um, I don't like that either. I want to be able to sh see what I'm shooting at. Um, lots of instances where people have shot their teenagers sneaking back into the house because uh, they didn't really know what the target was before they pulled the trigger and they killed their own kid. If you cannot see your sights well enough against the target, you should not be pulling the trigger because you don't have enough light to identify your target. Okay? Uh, reflex sights. <clears throat> These are kind of cool. Um, uh, the ones that I have take a little button battery, um, and uh, this guy's a little, a little 1x deal, uh, one times the magnification thing, and it allows you to look down the sight and see a red dot uh, for your sight picture, but it's not actually projected outside of the, outside of the body of the, of the sight. So there is no red dot downrange to look at the red dots here. Uh, so in this instance, this can serve as your as your front sight then because you're focused on that. But still, it's the same thing in my mind as focusing on the target. Um, again, these are, are kind of cool. This little 1X sight, I've mounted this to a shotgun before. Um, I've mounted it to an AR-15 before to kind of play around with. But again, <clears throat> this only has benefit uh, if you still have iron sights on the gun and you still have a backup. Um, but again, to me, this, this trains you in bad habits. It trains you to look at the dot instead of looking at your front sights. Um, now, things that don't really require batteries that help you aim better, such as a, a simple optical scope, uh, that has a benefit to me. So, uh, in summary, biometric safes, I don't think they're worth the money. Uh, lights can be a good weapon, but in my mind, turning the lights on in the house is uh, better than the flashlight mounted to the gun. Uh, lasers teach you bad habits, they teach you to look at the target instead of looking at your front sight. And if you don't check your batteries, you don't know if they're going to work before the fight. Okay? And again, I don't like relying on battery life to save my life. And reflex sights, again, they're kind of cool, but you must be able to check your batteries before the fight. A lot of these things are going to have a lot more uh, benefit if you're on a SWAT team and have time to check your batteries, but if you're relying on that gun for your life, train yourself well, train yourself to look at the front sight, and don't rely on batteries.